good, beautiful morning, everybody. And it really is a beautiful morning. This has been one of the nicest mornings probably since last spring. We've got something super cool going on today. I've got the trailer hooked up to the truck. I'm getting ready to head out. We're going out to a farm. We're gonna get some old cars out of the trees. Who knows what we're gonna find. I've actually already been here before. This is the same location where we got all those headlights and hubcaps and stuff out of that old rotten building. And we got a few vehicles out of there once before, but there's a few more vehicles left out there. And you guys know that the loader from this location had some hydraulic issues. So we had to put it in the shop. Well, the shop that was doing the hydraulic work was about halfway between here and where those old cars are. So the loader got finished yesterday. So I got to thinking, you know what? Why not just go ahead and run the loader out there real quick and get that job done? I think there's only five vehicles left, so I don't think it'll take too long. I do have to get them all out of the trees. That might take a little bit of time, but I think I can probably get it done today. If not today, we'll for sure get it done tomorrow. So with that, I'm gonna hop in the truck and head out. I'll see you guys out there. Well then, I just got here and uh, something unfortunate happened. I go to open the uh, hot wire gate. I grab the handle, I swing it over, and when I go to close it, I feel it go loose. And what happened was, is the uh, wire there and there broke. It must have just been barely hanging on, so I'm gonna have to put it back together. But uh, I don't have any pliers or anything. Now, in theory, that should be the hot wire over there, and the current travels this direction, so when you unhook the handle, it's not hot over here. Now, not everybody hooks it up that way, so I don't wanna test it and find out. I think what I'll do is I'll insulate myself from the ground by standing on this box of boxes, and then I can just wire it together by hand. Okay, there we go. I don't think it's hot anyway. I think I'm safe, but better safe than sorry. Problem is, is this wire is really hard, so it's really hard to do this by hand. Well, there we go, got it fixed. I think it's gonna work. I didn't get shocked, so I guess everything is working out. I can't just leave it unhooked because I just put the cows back in here a couple days ago. So, as you can see, all over the landmines, all over the ground. <laughs> There's a bunch of vultures out here. Yeah, there were several trucks up in there. He drug most of the first batch out with his tractor, but then he's been so busy he hasn't had time, so that's why I thought, you know, just why not go ahead and just bring the loader out here. Uh, some of them are actually all of the vehicles. Well, I say that. Most of the vehicles are up in there. We'll go check them out here in just a second. There is one vehicle out back. That building that we cleaned out is right there. There's definitely a lot of neat stuff out here, like this old trailer house here, the small one. That'd make a really cool office but I don't have time to work on it. It'd be a boatload of work to get that hauled home anyway. If guy had a long enough trailer, he could just load it up on there. A guy might be able to put tires on it and tow it home, but I don't have time to work on it anyway. It would need completely gutted and just totally restored. Way more than I have time for. But yeah, here's where all that stuff was at. Got a lot of neat stuff out of there. It was all really in bad condition just because it had sat for so many years, but we got as much as we could out of there that was still worth saving. One vehicle I have to get is over here. It's an old uh, task force. 55 to 57 Chevy. I had a big uh, tar pot tr uh, tanker on the back of it and the tank started falling off and he didn't want to smash the cab so he just stopped. So once I have the loader here, I'll be able to lift that off of there. Get that tank off there. I can just grab that truck, get it home. And in fact, I might just go ahead and try to set the tank back on and just haul it home all together. The tank's just scrap, but I mean, it's good scrap weight. There's odds and ends stuff laying around. If a guy had more time, lots of good scrap iron out here. Like there's a truck bed or something right there and there's bunches of pipe through here and just odds and ends stuff but I just don't have time to do it all here's a bunch of old pipe and scrap iron over here lots of good weight out here oh there's a cow sitting there in the tree staring at me I was wondering where they were at I didn't see them anywhere but there's one of them want to know what in the world I'm doing and now we're back into where the vehicles are this is probably my favorite one here this old GMC pretty cool old truck now it's in here pretty good I think if I hook onto the back of it, I can spin it around this tree and take it through here. There's kind of an opening in these trees right here. Not a very big opening, but I think it's enough to where I can wiggle it out of here. It does have a couple trees on this side that I'll have to watch out for. But like I say, if I just pull the back end over, I think I can make it clear. It's a neat old semi, that's for sure. And it's not in too terrible condition. This running board's kind of grown into that tree, so I'll have to be careful. And you can see that tree there is starting to eat the fender, so... It might get a little bit of damage on it, but it is what it is. There's this funky little homemade contraption here. I thought about taking this if I can get it out of here. I'm looking at it now. I don't think the trees are actually grown through the frame anywhere. So I think I can probably hook a chain on it and pull it, but I'm not sure what direction I would pull it. I guess I could probably pull it right through here. 
I guess I probably should have brought the skid steer because I'm going to have to use several chains to reach that far. But we'll see. That's not a big deal. If I can't get that, then I can't get that. There's a bunch more scrap over here. A manure spreader and other odds and ends junk. But like I say, I don't think we're going to worry about scrap iron today. I think we're just going to try to get the vehicles out of here and probably leave the rest. There's iron down here. He has a tractor with a backhoe on it and stuff like that. So uh, what I'll probably tell him is that in the future when he's cleaning this property up we can set a dumpster out here and he can just pack all the iron in there there's car parts everywhere out here there's some fenders there's the cowl off of something hard telling what and an old hood but it's all just been laying here forever and a day and so really none of it's any good anymore there's tires galore out here Okay, there's the car I was looking for. I knew it was around here somewhere. This one here is probably going to be a little bit of a challenge to get out just because it's so far back in here. I'm definitely going to have to do a little bit of tree work. This is a late 50s Ford. Two-door even. Two-door hardtop. Fairlane 500. car is really rough, but it is a two-door hardtop with all the stainless trim on it. So it's definitely worth getting out of here just for a few pieces that are still left on it. But like I say, getting it out of here is gonna be quite the challenge because I'm trying to figure out how a guy will even do it. There's bunches and bunches of scrap out here. I wish I had about a week. If I had about a week, I could load a lot of dumpsters of iron out here, but I really only have today and tomorrow. Yeah, here's a bunch more stuff. And some of this stuff has grown up in the trees, like that piece there will probably never come out. I think there's one over there. There was actually several vehicles back up in there that he took out a while back. I'm trying to figure out the best way, I think. Honestly, probably the best way to get this car out of here, I'm thinking, is right through here. The guy's going to have to move all this stuff here. And if I get real rambunctious, I may load up a load of this scrap iron. He told me, take anything I want to take and just pay him whatever it's worth. So I might load up a load of this stuff here and haul it in. I don't know. We'll see how it goes, but I think a guy could come through here because I'm going to have to come through up there anyway. So if a guy came in here, the guy's going to have to take out that tree, maybe that tree, and maybe, maybe trim this tree here up a little bit, and then I think I can get right through there and get that car and drag it out with a chain. So I think that's what we'll do. There's a little bit of scrap iron right here. So maybe we will stack a load of scrap iron on the trailer and haul it in. I don't technically have to have the loader back. I guess, no, I guess Monday's a holiday now that I think about it. So I really do need to get this done today and tomorrow. Today's Thursday, tomorrow's Friday. There's two more cars over there. We'll go around and look at those. I don't think those will be too big of a deal to get out because it's wide open on the other side. You can probably just drag them out. These cars are pretty neat. Honestly, this one here is pretty far gone. I don't know if it's even worth pulling out of here and it may not pull out of here. It may just shred into pieces. But this one here is pretty neat. Old two-door coupe. It's a pretty complete car. It's kind of a shame it's in this condition, but it is what it is. Like I said, I think I can scoot it over this way just a tiny bit and just pull it straight out. It's definitely a cool car. It looks like it's missing one of the grills down here in the front bumper. Yeah, as long as I can find a place to hook the chain, that's going to be the kickers. It's so buried down in the dirt. It's been here a lot of years. I mean, that's a big tree. It takes a lot of years for a tree to get that big. So it's hard telling how long this car has been here, but I bet it's been here for every bit of 50, 60 years. Yeah, I can bring the loader right in here. So probably what I'll do is I'll come in here and stick the fork underneath the front of it, pick it up and scoot it over. Then I can hook a chain on it and pull it out. And now that I'm kind of looking at it, I might be able to take the loader around through this direction to get back there to that old fair lane. That might be a little bit easier. I don't know. We'll see. And there's the cows. There they all go. Last time I was out here, they all wanted to hang out with me. This time they're scared of me. There is just scrap iron everywhere out here. Just don't have time for it all. But there's grain drills, bathtubs, you name it. There's a tractor over here I wanted to check out, though. There's a few good things. Like, there's a few semi-aluminum wheels laying around out here, but... This tractor, I looked at it, it's got the brush hog on it still, and it's got trees all grown through it, so I'm not going to mess with it. Yeah, there's one of the grain drills out there. Here's a little fenced-in area. This is kind of neat. I bet you this is where a house was at at one time. I guess the house burned down years ago or something like that. I don't remember exactly what the story was. 
but this building looks kind of burnt, so I'm assuming that's what happened. That old cemetery fence is definitely neat though. But it looks like the loader's here, so we're gonna get that off of there, get in there and get busy.
All right, guys, I made it back with that car, got it unloaded. My dad got that orange Chevy unloaded. I'm out here now. I'm probably going to grab the Fairlane next, but uh, I'll just let you guys know I only got about three hours of sleep last night, and I am starting to fall asleep, and that's not safe to drive down the highway when you're falling asleep. So what I'm going to do is I parked here in the shade. There's a nice breeze blowing. I'm going to take me a little bit of maybe a, a 10, 15 minute siesta. That'll get me going again, and it'll be a whole lot safer to get the rest of these hauled in today. There we go. I feel like a million bucks, or at least I feel like a million bucks if you uh, put it in a barrel and rolled it down the side of a mountain. <laughs> I'm still a little bit on the tired side, but I, I'm feeling a whole lot better. Check this out over here. It is beautiful out here. There's butterflies everywhere. I'm not sure what these pink flowers are, but boy, they attract the butterflies like crazy. It is just beautiful out here. It's not that hot. It's got a nice little breeze going on and it's it's warm, but it's been a lot warmer. Let's check this car out a little bit better while we're standing here. AD Rail Hutchinson, and I just stepped in that. I was so busy looking at the car and I just did that. Man. Well, that's wonderful. Luckily, it's real sandy soil out here, so I'll just go kick my feet through the weeds and sand for a little bit. But anyway, this car here, the quarter panels are pretty well shot on this thing. Looks like the deck lid's seen better days, but uh, actually, I guess the seats are in it. I didn't think the seats would be in it. Uh, the door doesn't open, but... Yeah, somebody might actually build this car being a two-door hardtop 57 Fairlane. All the trims on it still, and the basic tub isn't that bad a condition. You could find a random old four-door car, and it would have all the parts you need. To fix this one except for possibly the deck lid i'm not sure if the deck lid's the same one probably not the same on a four-door you'd probably have to either fix that one or find another one and then also the back window is probably a two-door thing only but once again these aren't a super rare car and at the very least there are a boatload of good parts on this car so anyway i'm going to throw that on my trailer there my dad's on his way back out he probably won't make it before i leave but i'm going to have that semi set on the forks ready to go for him then i'm going to come out and uh, i'm going to see if i can get that body and that tractor on the same load. I think if I put the tractor sideways on the trailer, it'll fit, and then I can put that car behind it or something. I don't know. I'm gonna to try to figure out a way of getting both of those in one trip. That way, all the cars will be done, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw that tank, maybe uh, maybe a few pieces of iron or something like that on my truck, on my trailer. That way I can haul those into the shredder tomorrow, help pay for the fuel of going back and forth and all that stuff. And then Todd, the guy that hauled my loader out here for me, uh, I'm just gonna to try to set him up with the guy that owns the property and he's got equipment. He's done farm cleanups for us before. He can come in here with excavators and skid steers and he can clean up all the scrap iron and they can work that deal out later just because, like I say, I just, there's no way I'm gonna have time to do it all. I wish I could, really do, but I, I just can't do it all. I think I have this car balanced perfectly on one fork. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. I couldn't do that again if I tried. And there we go. And then I'm just going to set this GMC right here. So my dad can drive in, turn around, throw it on his truck, chain it down, hit the road.
And good morning, we're out here again. Got everything hauled in yesterday, all the vehicles are gone. I thought, you know what, I've got a little bit of time to not waste this morning. I never have time to waste, but I figured I'd come out here and just get one load of scrap out of here. That way it'll pay for bringing the loader out here and taking it back and pay for the fuel and that sort of stuff. And I'll come over here and grab this tank. I do need to make sure that this thing isn't clear full of tar. I know it's an old tar trailer and there's a little bit of tar on it. This won't hurt anything here. I just need to make sure the inside of the tank doesn't have, you know, eight inches of tar in the bottom or something like crazy like that. I think it looks pretty empty. The tank's upside down right now. That goes all the way down in there, so uh, I think there's probably just a little bit of sludge in there, but not, not enough to really matter. I just stuck the stick down in there, and obviously there's nothing on the stick, so anything that's in there is brick hard. Probably just a real thin layer, kind of like what's on the back of the fenders here and underneath the tank, that sort of stuff. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fire up the loader. I'll probably just throw the GoPro on top of the loader real quick and uh, film gathering up a load of stuff, toss it on the trailer, chain it down, take it into the claw. One other thing is I am going to go ahead and take this load to the claw. I know I haven't been taking much there. I haven't taken anything there for a long time now, but uh, actually they're paying a little bit better if I crush it and load it in the trailers. However, just for the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and run this load in real quick. That last farm cleanup we did with the combines and all that iron and stuff like that, all of that just went into the claw as well. I'm not super worried about it. It's not a huge difference in price. It's just a whole lot simpler to do it this way. Just take it in, get it off the trailer. Now, if it was cars, scrap cars, I would take those back and crush those. But uh, since it's just iron and scrap metal, stuff like that, I'm not going to mess with doing all that extra effort. This is a definite back road load here. <laughs> It's it kind of butt heavy, but it just it's ugly. I could probably take it down the highway okay. I think I have the weight distributed good enough anyway, but uh, it's just so ugly. And yesterday there was a bunch of highway patrols and whatnot out, so I just assumed the hassle. I've got it chained down nice and secure. It's not going anywhere. Oh, and in case you're wondering why I put that tank upside down instead of setting it upright so it would sit more level and look better, is because I wanted them to be able to get it off my trailer and leaving that fender up in the air like that gives a good place for the claw to grab. I was worried that if I put it the other direction, they'd have a hard time getting a hold of it and they might drop it on my trailer or something like that. So, I don't know, that always worries me a little bit. The last time I went there, they dropped something. I forget what it was on my trailer and tore something up. I forget what, but it's, that's the last time I went there. So, it's always a little bit nerve wracking hauling stuff in there, but we'll see what happens. Well, I made it. Here's all the stuff from that last farm cleanup. The combines are down there, all that iron and pipe. Bunch of stuff there. A little bit of stuff down here at this end actually looks like that prison bus now that I look at it. Yeah, there's the front of that prison bus and <laughs> a little bit of the bodies left. So it looks like they hauled a lot of it off already. Well, he tried to lift it off with the magnet. I knew it wouldn't work. It's way too heavy. But the uh, other claw is busy loading a big truck over there, and he, he's been loading that for the last, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. Every time I come in here, I remember why I don't like it, but uh, that's okay. I'll, I'll wait a little bit longer. He said he's almost done, and then he'll lift the tank off of there, and then we get the rest off there, and then I can get to the yard. I've got customers waiting on me, so uh, I really hope they hurry.
All right, after almost an hour of waiting down there, finally got that unloaded. It weighed about 10,000 pounds, so a lot more weight than I thought it was gonna be. I'm here at the yard now. I've gotta unload this van real quick, and then I'll go around and kinda of show you everything we got a little bit better. That's a pretty heavy van. They put a lot of junk in there, it looks like. Okay, I looked through it a little bit, and uh, there's a few big aluminum radiators in there, but it's not gonna be worth the effort to get them out because they're kind of pinched in there now. So I'm not gonna worry about those. Smash the roof in a little bit on it, and uh, I can't stack it in the pile yet because it's got aluminum wheels on it. I gotta pull those off, and I don't think I have my impact with me today. I didn't plan on buying cars today, actually, but uh, it is what it is. When somebody calls and they have a car and they need to sell it right away, unless I'm super busy, I'll go ahead and buy it. This little excavator tries to crush the stuff, but not quite as good as an actual crusher, but I think it's better than the loader. And I could make it flatter if I really wanted to, but I'd have to hammer and hammer on it. And uh, more than likely, I'm gonna bring the uh, crusher back in here anyway at some point next year, maybe next spring, I don't know, we'll see. I said basically whenever I get 100 cars in here again that are ready to crush, I bring it back and I'm at about, I think, 30 cars right now. So it's taken me about a month to get that many. So I don't know, maybe I'll have to bring it back before spring. One thing I really had to get used to with grabbing cars like this is not digging the bucket in the dirt on the other side. As you can see here, I've got this other car. It's got a couple of aluminum wheels on it, so I'll just set this on top of there. We'll pop those off of there another day. And then over here, you can kind of see my pile. It's getting bigger and bigger. Like I say, I have roughly 30 cars now that are completely 100% ready. Don't see anything good left on this one. I think it's about ready for the crusher. It does have a copper radiator in it, so uh, I'll move this deck lid out of the way. Grab that out of there. I guess he has a whole field clear full of old 70s and 80s Ford stuff and Lincoln stuff, but uh, it's not his, he's cleaning it up, but they're all burnt. This one here is one of the nicest ones on the place. Unfortunately, a wildfire came through and burned them all up. He saved the Versailles suspension out of this one though, and he says he's got two more Versailles, Versailles he's gonna cut up and then pretty much everything else is gonna come in just like it is. Good crushing material, but it's lunchtime now, so I'm gonna hop in the truck, get out of here, get something to eat. I've gotta get this thing out of the back of my truck still. I can't get that out by hand, it's too heavy, so I'm gonna to have to get the loader out, same way I put it in there, and fork it out of there. The only reason I saved it is for the iron wheels. I figured those are worth more than scrap value, so I'll pull those off and scrap the rest of it another day. Hi, I will take a number 13, no onions. I'll do a small fry, but I'll do a large sweet tea, light ice. And that's all? Okay, thank you.
All right, it's actually been almost a week since I finished this cleanup job. It's just been so busy all week long that I haven't had time to show you guys these cars. I bought a boatload of old cars this week, although they don't really fit in with this video, so I'm probably not gonna bother showing them to you now. Maybe I'll do a live video and show them to everybody that way or something like that. I don't know, maybe I'll do a show and tell video later. I guess we'll see how it goes. But I do wanna go through and show you all the cars now that I got them out of the trees. This rusty piece of junk, I mean, this thing's really, really rough. It was free. Originally, I was supposed to get the tank that was on the back of that orange Chevy truck because I had already bought that truck. But when it looked like that tank wasn't gonna go with the truck, he was just gonna roll it off, drag the truck out, and he said I could have this car instead of that tank. So technically this thing was free, but even at the price of free, I don't know if it was worth it. Definitely since I had the loader there, it was. I guess it was probably worth it, but if I wouldn't have the loader there, uh, it wouldn't have been worth the effort to get out without heavy machinery. Although it does have a good deck lid on it and kind of a neat rear window. A guy might be able to use that in a rat rod or something like that. So I don't know. I'm not going to crush it for now. Maybe I'll do something with it later. It did have some cool old wheels laying in the back of it. So maybe I can sell those. This 41 Ford, pretty cool car. I got really lucky. I went to the quick shop, which was just right down the road, a little convenience store. And uh, when I got there, I noticed one of the headlight rings was laying on my trailer. So I grabbed it and then I went ahead and popped the other one off. Almost lost those going down the highway. This car underneath, the frame and all that is kind of rusty from sitting down in the dirt, but the body itself, it's a little on the beat up side, but it's actually not very rusty at all. So I think this car is very restorable, especially since it's mostly complete. Like I say, uh, this fender here is pretty toast, but other than this fender and then one spot in the hood, there's really no rust in the actual body of this car. I'm sure once a guy sands it down down there, you're gonna find a bunch of pinhole rust that you're gonna have to work with. But you know, it's an 82 year old car, so I guess what do you expect? Especially if a guy found a four door car or a parts car or something like that, you could really make something out of that one there. And it, it's a cool enough car to where it's worth the extra effort. If this car is not sold, I would like to get 1500 out of this. And if you're hearing me say this, that means it's still available at least of the time of posting this. So as always, if you're interested in something you see, go ahead and email me. My email is in the description of this video. Here's a little sneak preview of one of the cars that came in this week. 1968 Buick Skylark Custom. I got that car and eight other cars off of a farm up by Topeka, Kansas. Next up, we got this 57 Fairlane. This car is very rough. Actually, the other side isn't that bad. This side's really rough though, but it's got a lot of good chrome on it. A lot of two door hardtop only stuff. This side of the car, while it's down in the weeds, you can't really see it, isn't that bad actually. And so, I don't know. I mean, this car would probably part out pretty good. It does have a really cool trunk on it that would make a cool couch. We'll see how it goes. I'm hoping somebody will buy just the whole thing and use it for a parts car. But uh, if not, I guess I'll go ahead and part it out myself. Which is kind of a shame because some of this chrome, like around the back window and these arch pieces right here, that stuff's got to be worth pretty good money. But how in the world would you ever ship that? The small stuff off the doors and whatnot, you could get that into tubes and mail it. But... All this big stuff would be a nightmare to mail. Here's another car here that came from up by Salina. This one's got wraps around on the corners, on the bumpers. Pretty rare option. This car's actually already sold. All the cars I got up there are pretty rusty, but I got some pretty cool ones out of there. Another one that I got is a uh, 1968 Pontiac Catalina, two-door uh, hardtop, fastback, whatever you want to call it. I got a 62, I think, Dart station wagon. Super rusty car, but it's got good glass on the back of it, so that's got to be worth something. Got a bunch of international trucks, and I forget what else I got out of there. I think it was mainly just trucks. And then in addition to that, I bought some other stuff out west in western Kansas. I bought five vehicles out there, which four of those are still out there. I haven't even gotten those in yet. Then I had a guy bring me a car earlier today. I shipped away an international truck, that uh, green one that sat right here forever. Got me a nice little spot cleared out. I'm surprised that truck took so long to sell. That was actually a really nice truck but uh, it headed away. I'll probably take that 41 Ford Coupe and put it right here instead. Then I had a guy drive in, I think from Virginia, a subscriber actually, and he bought all of the 261 Chevy engines that I had on the place, and it was pretty cool. He brought me and my dad quarts of honey, so if you're watching this, thank you. And I feel like I bought a couple more old cars this week, and I can't remember what they were even. Like I say, it's been a crazy week. Tons of stuff going on. I'm going to a big auction tomorrow, and just Tons and tons and tons of stuff going on right now. So I actually haven't even been filming this week. Here's the truck that had the uh, tank on the back of it. It's got a real cool, I forget what it's called up on the dash. I may have showed it to you already. Of course, this door doesn't open, but you can see it up there. What's this called? A, uh, oh, a 
Bitometer, a Vitometer, whatever you want to call it, Stuart Warner. That's a pretty cool piece right there. I'll probably pull that out and sell it separate. Then it's got lots of good dash parts in it. The truck itself is kind of on the rusty side. This side isn't quite as bad, but the other side is just rotted to nothing. But it does have a really good color to it, so I can always uh, cut the nose off of it. The doors, this door is kind of junky. The other one's probably usable, so I can probably sell those for art or use for parts, whichever. And then I can cut the back of the cab off. And then I got this GMC Semi. This is probably a late 40s truck, I'm guessing. Very cool truck. This is probably my favorite one out of there. A really, really neat truck. I don't, I don't think I've ever had one of these before. I've had a lot of old GMC trucks out of the 40s, but never this body style. But look at the inside of this thing. All these gauges here in the middle, that's just so cool. The heater down there. And really, it's kind of shocking. This truck is not in that bad a condition. There's really no rust in it except for one little spot over there on the passenger side. And this truck is, a, say it's a late 40, say it's a 47, 46 model, something like that. It was parked in 1955. So it was barely ever on the road. It's probably got hardly any miles on this thing. Here's that rot box Dodge wagon that I bought. Like I say, this car is a rusty piece of junk, but it's got all that good glass on the back of it. I know that stuff's hard to find when a guy needs it. Then it's got a lot of other good parts on it as well. So definitely a good parts car. And then last but not least, well, maybe, uh, probably not completely least. Probably that piece of that 40-something Ford body is the least. But this old tractor, homemade thingamajigger, I'm not even sure what this is. Obviously, they use it as a tractor, but it looks like pretty much everything on this is homemade. I just thought it was so unique. I couldn't see letting it go for scrap. I doubt it's really worth anything, but I figured it'd make good yard art out here if nothing else. It looks like they literally built this thing completely from scratch. It looks like the only thing that might actually be a, a tractor part is the uh, motor and transmission and even those might have been out of an old truck or something. Looks like they tried styling it as a farmall. It's got the fake farmall badge on the front of it. Homemade grill. Looks like it has an old car front axle. Chevrolet I think the caps say. It's got a big truck rear axle that they shortened and narrowed or whatever you want to call it. They even put a shock on the seat. This just came in. I was getting ready to close the video out. And then he drove in with this. But check out that hood ornament. I don't even know what that goes to. I don't think it goes to this truck, but I'm guessing it is GM of some sort. I'm sure it's like a vintage aftermarket piece that you bought back in the day. But it doesn't quite line up right with this truck, so I'm guessing it's off a car. But man, this truck is pretty nice. There's only one bad spot on this thing. It actually runs. It runs and drives. It even has brakes. They were using it. But uh, right here where the door opened too far, it crunched it all in. But it's got new tires on it. The only issue is, is it doesn't start with the kick down. Somebody hooks something up wrong somewhere, you have to pull start it. Not sure what that's all about, but this is a really sharp truck. But even the inside of this truck is pretty nice. It's not a solid rat nest or anything like that. Other bad spot is right there. You can see where they cut that out for some unknown reason. I don't know what the reasoning was for that. And it's got a little bit of rust down there by the floor, but that's about typical. These old trucks almost always have that. If you find one of these that doesn't have rust in that spot, you have a cream puff on your hands and it's worth pretty big money. But this one here is definitely above average. And now I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out now that you guys saw that truck. I have one more person actually coming out, I think, today, but like I say, I, I've already bought so many old cars you ha guys haven't gotten to see, I'm gonna have to do a separate video anyway. Definitely let me know in the comments below which of the vehicles in this video was your favorite. I have to say my personal favorite so far has gotta be uh, I'm trying to think of what all I showed in this video. It'd probably have to be the GMC Semi, honestly. Even of the vehicles that weren't in this video, that's still my favorite. Such an unusual and cool truck. That's the only one I've ever had. It may be the only one I ever do have. Although you just never know. I Beginning of this month, I thought it was going to be a slow month. I didn't know of any cars to buy. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I've been buying cars right and left from all over the state. So <laughs> it's, it's changed. Things can change in this business very quickly. Hopefully I can actually sell some stuff though, because I've spent more money in the last week than I think I did all last month. But if you enjoyed this video as a whole, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. We're getting closer and closer and closer to 100,000. We're almost there. I'll let you go with that. As always, have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And remember to get out there, find yourself an adventure. We'll see you on the next one.